first man here. I mean, I like to start the day early, and I'm always the first person at the office. Um, there's a quiet, like there's a quiet of uh, people not working yet that I love. He took the bomb. <laughs> Scratch and win. Scratch and win type shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck NFT. Scratch and win is where it's at. <laughs> that's where the real. That's where the real market cap is. Aiden wanted to get in. He was getting into crypto. He was getting into NFTs and the idea of doing one. And he started putting together a team of people who came together and uh, he called Stefan. You know, I was his assistant, so I was there full time. Luke, our developer, a couple other people that just helped with the inception of the project. And really, we started to piece together all the assets that were hand drawn by Stefan. And basically, Stefan would draw, like, take a big piece of paper, draw out like a hundred different mouths and a hundred different eyes and a hundred different hands and everything was done on paper and then me I literally was like coming up with the ideas for the different mouths and being like oh we really like this one we don't really like that one and and helping him organize everything putting everything together then scan cutting them out individually piece by piece scanning them putting them on Photoshop, in Illustrator, converting them to digital files, and then like repositioning the assets and making the characters come to life. I remember the first thing that uh, like I did was like, I learned that like Stefan was like doing everything and then like scanning it in and like drawing like drawing and scanning it in. and I'm just like I'm just like okay so like if we had if there was like a typo or like like if he needed to like make an edit I'm like we'd have to copy and scan it again I'm like can't do that so I was like I remember the first day I was like okay I gave him this sheet of paper I was like write all the letters down like the alphabet and like all the like little symbols and numbers and stuff we're gonna turn your handwriting into a font. did all the asset generation and then we were sitting around and we were talking about what the project was going to be and what our roadmap was going to be and what our utility was and Aiden was so strongly committed to the idea of building a community and building a group of people who put artists first. Aiden was definitely the glue that like figured it all out and put all the pieces together. So it was like kind of this Lego thing and we, you know, all the first meetings were over at his house and then like as it kind of progressed and we were more people and needed to do shoes and we're like, we need to start making clothes and shit. We started to work out of my office for the first like month. Big taco truck when I'm riding, run them over. Cup run it over, copy that over. All these lands we over, know me, I don't know. Aiden like approached me with this idea of doing an NFT project and so workshopped a bunch of ideas. I mean he knew he wanted to do like a community run creative studio. That was the concept of the like project, but we were kind of thinking, you know, how do we what what imagery is gonna symbolize that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Show up. 
My name is Najee Washington. I do a bit of everything. I was running community for a while, talking to all the holders, getting to know everybody, and making sure the community was activated like at all times, running movie nights and running the social medias. The team realized that I could make and produce clothes. With my brand Sky Parlor, it's a cut and sew brand. Aiden thought that I knew how to produce merch and stuff like that. I didn't. I met Angel and the guys at One Embroidery. I'm on the first day I met the plus. When I came back to the city, I kept seeing that some of my friends were working with them and you know checking out their work on the gram and reached out on some random stuff. They looked out got a quick return and I've been working with them since. I would say the funniest thing about like my love for computers is I think it all started with um, Club Penguin, honestly. Yeah, I was like eight or nine and I wanted to do more things in Club Penguin. So I was just like Googling hack Club Penguin. And, and then I just kind of fell into, you know, some actual software that was being used. And I was like, well, how's this made? And I don't know. Just a couple things. The Heart Project, it's big differentiator, is, is like partially kind of full circle going back to the whole conversation. Yes, the people, but that's such a cliche. Every team in the world is going to say, you know, we're the best people, we're, we're the best team, our team is amazing. I would say for the Heart Project, it's really special because we're doing something, we are doing something different than all the other projects in terms of we are collaborating with artists because we have a connection of artists through Aiden and Stefan and our, our community. One thing that I, I don't think a lot of projects talk about is we've brought on so many people from our community just in our Discord to do animations for our parties, things like, uh, like a little video, um, promotional stuff, um, images, um, all kinds of things. We even did our zine with our community, which was just a bunch of photographers and artists coming together from our community. Like, I think it was like 150 people. People come in there every day after work or during work and just come talk or come hang out and people are in there sharing their work and really contributing and saying I did this today like what other hearts are interested in this and what other creative hearts like people are really in there collaborating kind of talking most days it's really hard to go on our discord and, and leave feeling sad you know it's, it's, it's fun it's good to chat Sort of around the time that I got approached by Alex, who was my connection to Aiden, I was working as an editor on this documentary, which was like the best thing I've ever done. I got to travel to Europe to shoot for it. And then I came back, was finishing up on this documentary when I got approached and asked if I wanted to be a personal assistant for Aiden. And I was like, I don't really want to be a personal assistant, but then I looked into him and I looked into the heart project and I was like, this is the sickest thing I've ever seen. Hell yeah, I want to be Aiden's personal assistant. My favorite and also most stressful part of my job has been producing shoots. As you can see, we've made a boy's bedroom out of my room. We had electric guitars. We had the plaid dark green bedspread. We had the lava lamps, the Xbox controller. It was a really good look. It's all the streets you cross, not so long. For the Prentice video, our timeline was really rapid. 
and our budget was really, really tight. It was pretty much rapid fire in the week leading up to it. Finding a DP, his whole team of ACs, camera helper people, grip lighting helper people. We ended up with a crew of like 11 to 12 people, I would say. And so just communicating with everyone, making sure everyone shows up on time, everyone's bringing their proper equipment, knows where location one is and where location two is, getting dietary restrictions from people to figure out lunch, you know, things like that are sort of in the day-to-day -day role of a producer working on set. The cool thing about the Prentice video was we got to involve, we got to hit our mission point. Our mission point is to get heart project, heart holders involved in a project. And that was super dope. Our BTS was a heart holder. Our animator was a heart holder. He came here and 3D scanned Prentice. Um, our editor's a heart holder. Like that's a heart holder project. Like we were all, not only people within the heart project team, but just heart holders out in our community. We reached out to a new. So that's, that's literally the goal. Like that's what we're trying to do. Long term, it's doing more creative projects with the community. So continuing to do things like The Apprentice and this and this and this. But what makes it so powerful is not only are we community and we're doing music videos and bringing on people from the community to do and help. So cool. Parties, 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 parties. We've thrown some cracking ones so far. I mean, the Miami Art Basel party was insane. <laughs> That was a full shit show and a half. Gunna came out. We had Nas perform Amine. I DJ'd for a bit. All I wanna do is count commas. I had to make a couple bands for the comma. I've been throwing parties for the last two years. People like them, so we're gonna keep doing them. And you know, with the hearts, it's the same kind of energy. Like, we wanna find ways for us to like get together and, and do shit, um, you know, IRL and metaverse vibes. That was kind of the first phase of the project. It was getting the community together and giving everyone a physical place to come and meet each other and get to know each other, network, interact, and take the online community that we built and, and bring it into the real world. You've got mail. Corporate disruption. So they're protesting. Um, we demand to have more fun. I knew John had been doing like NFT stuff, and it was pretty mysterious to me. And I like hadn't talked to John in a while, like a couple of weeks. He asked me to have lunch with him because he said he really needed to talk to me. I went to go meet him in Larchmont. And I arrived at the lunch. It was very dramatic. John pulls out an NDA and made me sign it at the table. Let's go. As soon as I signed it, he goes, now we can talk. I was doing freelance work for a while. I was doing graphic design, animation. This was for a um, like abstracted animation. And what's funny is that this was a storyboard for a like classical piece. I ended up doing my animation to Toxic by Britney Spears. And I didn't use any of this. I was getting just kind of bored. It wasn't like anything original and I was just like producing what people needed me to produce for them. When John called me and I was like thrown into this environment, which was stressful and 
chaotic and like super exciting and felt like we were talking about something that hadn't been done before and was like brand new. Running to Aiden's house and Luke's there coding shit with Stefan like tired from drawing, you know, a thousand assets in like two weeks. So it definitely was startup vibes with just everyone in Aiden's kitchen like hustling to make this happen. It felt like this really amazing way of like bridging all the things that I had always wanted to do it's more than just like making art and it's more than having like an individual practice because it involved so much like creative thinking and being around other artists but it wasn't like reliant on my own personal output but like the group output was like 100 times what i could ever do by myself the, the, the heart project team like the core team has a really fluid creative Flow. Like, are you sick of the antiquated ways of the entertainment industry? Have you ever had to chase an invoice for months on end? We've figured out a way to this person, like Aiden will call the right person and HK will whip up a graphic and Luke will tell us what's technically possible. Programmers often like to joke about that like working with creative people is like one of the most stressful things ever. Get it together! I love it. But it's a very real thing that, you know, if you have five um, of some of the most creative people in the world all in a room together, they're going to come out and say, let's make the next Adobe Photoshop combined with Twitch combined with. And it's and that's stressful. Uh, you know, you hear that as a program. And can we do that in a week? Well, when are we going to move? No. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's 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 a really beautiful thing working with creative people because. I think that's how the best ideas get made. You have these creatives who come up with these outrageous ideas and you kind of, we have to chisel them down. I have to say, no, that's technically, guys, we, we can't do that. We're not Google. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's like, but there's something there. Let's, let's chisel that out and let's do something really awesome. We get offers every single day for, for people wanting to do collaborations and do projects with us. Everyone at the core has a good idea, but a lot of it comes down to timing. A lot of it comes down to feasibility budgets it's there are so many factors that go into play when we have conversations with partners the really hard part comes when you have to say no to some of them and really start to be intentional and specific about which ideas you're pursuing and that's a little bit about us we are the heart project My general background, um, I came from a pretty technical world, working in IT for a software company for somewhere north of five years. And after kind of climbing the ranks through that, starting as an intern and then getting to this place where I was traveling around the US, going between data centers in LA to DC. I kind of just got over it. still very much like believe and love physical medium whether it's like toys or books or records or I'm like super collective in my own ways but I still believe in the future of the kind of the, a virtual world whatever that means I play video games I I love League of Legends I buy skins sometimes like I understand how ridiculous the idea of it all is to just like kind of flex your favorite <laughs> um, graphic work or whatever it is that I can't ever pull that out of the game and like put it on. With NFTs, where we're at with say something like Hearts, there's utility behind it that allows people to have, get physical product. Um, some of that is almost, almost as if you have a, uh, you know, it's essentially a token to be able to receive something on the physical end if you have this, it's a good benefit. This year is a contest winner's jacket, so we are stitching it custom and uh, just hitting it with all the graphics. 
At Hearts, we do a lot of stuff that will produce um, outside as well, but um, for anything that's one of one, um, we make it here at my studio. With something like this, and I don't think it's going to replace any and all business, but I think the ones, some of these projects that are popping up that allow you to have a vote and a right to the navigation and direction of where it's all going, it's really exciting. If you looked at like the way the dot-com era hit in the 90s, people were like scooping up website URLs and not knowing what any of it meant. And just like, there was venture capital money going left and right all over the place. And nobody really knew what to do with a lot of this stuff. Like, I'm gonna buy cool t-shirts.com and I'm gonna sell shirts or something. Like people had their idea, but a lot of it sank. But then it also started birthing like some really interesting business models like Google, eBay, Amazon. They're kind of the giants, but they also defined everything individually and not necessarily like communally. Whenever there's a suggestion, whenever there's a complaint, whenever there's anything, I want people to feel like they can, they can send it to us and we will listen to it and we will think about it. And with the DAO that we're building, we won't just think about it and talk about it and potentially do it, we will vote on it. And if the community decides they want to do it, we'll do it. It's simple. <laughs> We can like help people produce things and make things for us and for other people. I think it's like the coolest shit ever. And it's like created from like a real genuine, like creative place, not some like shit because it makes me money. And that's a little bit about us. Sweet.